Hi, hi. Welcome to the Live Best Kitchen. I'm Judy Barb, your host, and I'm, I'm so grateful you're here today. Thanks for stopping by. Let me know where you're watching from. If, if it's live or with the rebroadcast, just leave a, a message in the comments about where you're, where you're tuning in from. I'm in Wyoming, like I said, in the Live Best Kitchen. So um, I am Judy Barb. I am your host. I'm also a registered dietitian. And I'm the author of your six week guide to live best simple solutions for fresh food and well being. I think one of my um, kind of my secret sauce is realistic food solutions. And I try hard to work with foods that move you forward. Today, I am talking about fiber. I have a free five day high five fiber challenge on my website. So I encourage you to head over to the website and sign up for that at livebest.info. You know, I think most of us really don't need another chocolate cake recipe or a brownie recipe. We need to figure out how to feed ourselves with foods that move us forward, with foods that provide benefits. I call them FWB, foods with benefits, because that's what I try to cook with and try to eat with. And, um, and so that's what we're doing today. <clears throat> So today we're actually cooking from the book. We're also cooking from the website and I'm making a white bean dip. Um, and I'm focusing on um, the bean dip today because it's so easy to make. I, I eat it for breakfast. I eat it as a snack. I've eaten it for lunch. It's a great little appetizer. And when I do meal prep on Sunday, I often make this bean dip because it'll keep through the week. That is if I haven't eaten at all by the, by the end of the week. But, um, <clears throat> but I mentioned that we're focusing on fiber. And the reason why is most Americans don't get the fiber, don't meet their fiber recommendations. And it's kind of tough to meet fiber recommendations if you don't plan for it. So um, how much do you need? It varies by your age and by your sex. So people who are 50 years old and younger, women, they need 25 grams of fiber a day and men need 38. Once you hit the 50 year mark though, your fiber needs drop just a little bit. Women, 21 grams of fiber a day and men, 30 grams of fiber a day. Unfortunately, most Americans get about half of that and really our colons could use a little bit of help there. So, so that's why I'm making a bean dip today. Because beans are one of the best sources of fiber. In a half a cup of beans, you get six grams of fiber. <clears throat> and the way you can find that out is to look on the nutrition facts panel on the label that's on almost all packaged foods. You know, some people poke fun about processed foods, but I'll tell you canned beans are one convenient convenience food that I keep in my, in my cupboard. But look at the nutrition facts label, look at the serving size, and then just scroll down to, to carbohydrates and you'll see how much fiber is in a certain food. Um, <clears throat> like I said, beans are a great source of fiber and, and so I use them a lot. In fact, I challenge myself every week to figure out how, my, how can I work in a can of beans this week? And this bean dip is one delicious way to do that. So, so I've drained a can of beans and I've rinsed them. Uh, just let them dry a little bit here in the colander. I'm gonna add them into my food processor. When you rinse beans, when you rinse a can of beans, you can um, reduce the sodium content by about 40% just by, re just by rinsing those beans. So rinse the beans. And now I'm going to add in some fresh herbs. Um, <clears throat> It's an herby bean dip. It's really quite flexible. I have some fresh parsley here that, um, that I bought at the grocery store. I also have just a little bit of rosemary that I'm growing in a pot in my sunroom. Rosemary is a pretty strong flavored herb, so just a sprig or two is nice with that. Um, and um, so I've cleaned the parsley, trimmed it up a little bit, and I'm adding about a quarter of a cup of fresh parsley. <clears throat> this bean dip is really quite flexible. If you like cilantro, use that. Basil's great in it. Um, 
uh, tarragon is nice too. So I often use a combination of herbs. And in the summer when I have fresh herbs in my garden, I, this bean dip often turns green because I add so many fresh herbs. But I love the, the flavor changes you can get from different herbs. But I also like um, just, you know, the variety and the flavor combination that I can create. So I've added about a quarter of a cup of fresh parsley and that little sprig of rosemary that you saw. Now I'm gonna add uh, two tablespoons of olive oil. I've already measured this out and it's important to measure your olive oil rather than just glug, glug, glug because um, olive oil, any fat, is a really concentrated source of uh, calories. So you just wanna make sure that you are um, paying attention to how many calories you're adding in there. Next, I'm going to add some fresh lemon, and um, I am going to use all parts of the lemon. I'm going to take a zester and zest the yellow bit of the rind to get the zest. I don't want to go too deep on this because if I get into the white pith, it'll get kind of bitter. So just a little bit of lemon zest here. I say use about the, the zest of half a lemon. You know, if you don't want to use all that, you don't have to. And then, oh, my tool here is a micro plane zester. I love this uh, piece of equipment. It, it really does great uh, zest, nice and fine. So I use it with lemons, limes, oranges, grapefruits. I've also grated chocolate with it. Um, pretty handy tool to have in the kitchen. The other tool I'm using is a um, handheld juicer. This is by OXO, and, and I, I like this one a lot. I'm just going to squeeze some fresh lemon into my herb and bean mixture, and uh, be prepared, might get a squirt in the eye. But there's just no comparison uh, between fresh zest and fresh lemon juice versus what you might think of, you know, using just a jarred version of it. I, I, I just think the flavor is so much more worth it when you go fresh. The other thing with this lemon juice, what I, the advantage here is I'm cutting back on the oil to increase the lemon juice. That saves calories, but it also boosts some of the you know, some, some vitamin C there from the lemon juice. So it'll be kind of tangy, but it will be lower in calories. Just squeeze that in. And now I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon, or oh, let's see, yeah, half a teaspoon of salt. And I love fresh ground pepper, so, my recipe calls for about an eighth of a teaspoon. I'm usually pretty generous with my pepper. <clears throat> and then um, some dried red pepper flakes, and I, I have just a, a dash of those. I also like spicy, so I, I often yeah, maybe do a eighth of a teaspoon of that. And then it's ready to go. So I'm just gonna pop it in the blender here. It'll be noisy for a second. And there, I've made bean dip. And um, you can go as chunky as you want. Um, this is pretty chunky, and, and I'm okay with that. Um, I would just spoon this into a container that I could seal and pop it in the fridge. Uh, but I can also just eat it right now. And uh, I like a carrot stick with it. I love cucumber slices. I also have some red pepper strips here that I've cut that would make a good dipper. Whole grain crackers, sugar snap peas. Um, I think I mentioned cucumber slices. Even apple slices would be good with this bean dip. So it really is um, very versatile. And you know, I showed you the flavorings that I like, but you can add other flavors that you might like. Smoked paprika would be good. Uh, caramelized onions. If you have an avocado, you might want to throw that in. 
Uh, let's see, fresh spinach could also be good thrown into the blender when you're uh, mixing up your bean dip. So you can see it can be as flexible as the ingredients in your kitchen, but also as flexible as your taste buds want to go. So <clears throat> that's my white bean dip. Let me know, do you think that looks good to you? Or what ingredients would you use to make it your bean dip? These are the ingredients I use to make mine. I said I do eat this for breakfast sometimes. I think it's a great solution because it's high in protein, it's high in fiber, fiber, but most of all, it's just deliciously flavored dip that I can, um, um, you know, munch on vegetables while I'm uh, for breakfast, and I really like that solution. I mentioned fiber and and that this is a good source, but you know, this morning I ate a pear for breakfast and a pear is a good source of fiber too, about six grams of fiber for for one pear. Um, if I had a handful of nuts that I added into that, I'd get maybe three grams more of fiber. So while I'm trying to reach a goal of 21 grams, these three things are taking me pretty darn close to it. So, so I really like that. <clears throat> So as we wrap things up today, um, thanks again for stopping by. I encourage you to go over to livebest.info, sign up for the free five-day high five fiber challenge. You'll get tips and tools, resources and recipes to help you meet your fiber goals because that's what I'm here for is trying to um, help you live better and help me live better because at Live Best, I really do want to live with vitality. I want to live healthier, stronger, longer. And, and I know I can do that when I power pack my fork or I guess when I power pack my carrot stick. So thanks again for stopping by and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.